Hey there guys, so here I am a review on a brand new Trick or Treat Studios Seed Up Chucky 1-1 scale Chucky replica. So, I was going to start the review with him outside, um, inside the box, but I got too excited and I had to take him out, so I'm going to start off the review with just the box. So the box, it's about the same size as the Good Guy Dolls box, um, except it's obviously a different style. It's not shiny and glossy, it's like a matte black, very nice and smooth. It has some scarring detailing, I don't know if you could see the light reflecting on it right here. Here it says, time to raise some hell. As you can tell, the little window is cracked. It has some scarring around. Seed of Chucky, 1-1 one, one scale. Collect the whole family, because as you know, they're going to release uh, Glenn and the Bride, Trick or Treat Studios. From the top, it says, Seed of Chucky, time to raise some hell. Same thing on the side, and you get an image of Chucky. I believe, of, I, I believe this was a promotional image of him in the film. You get that on the bottom. On the back, you get some really nice art. I really like this. So, like all the lettering and the art is like gloss and shiny. You know, it says I'm Chucky, the killer doll, and I dig it. Okay, contains one killer doll. That's fine. So yeah, the back I really dig this art. I I love it. it looks really nice. And on the side, you get the same thing. So and the bottom. Let's see what we got on the bottom. Oh, nothing. I, I didn't take a look at the bottom. So on the inside you do get some red um red background color with the doll taped in there. Um so let's take a look at the doll himself. Alright, so here we have the man of the hour, Chucky himself. As you can see, I have the Gremlins next to him, which is also Trick or Treat Studios. Maybe I might have swallowed since he's already there, so you guys can see the size comparison. Chucky's a little taller than the Gremlin. Um This he is a tiny bit easier to stand up on his own. Still gotta get him in the right position than the good guy's doll. I believe he is a tiny bit heavier. Maybe I'm not sure. Maybe the head. Um, so first, I'm gonna show you guys from this angle, you know, 360, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go like in close up, you know, of his face and all the details. So, I mean, this guy, just seeing him inside the window of the box, I was like, wow. I mean, the amount of detail that is that went into this guy. Like, this is the best collectible I have in my whole collection. He just looks fucking amazing. Like wow. He has all the tears in his clothes, the scars, the hair. You could lift it up, and you got like a big ass freaking hole back here, which I'll show you guys later, close up. And I love how the hair is actually sewn in, unlike the good guy doll, which I believe was a wig that was just glued onto the the doll. I don't remember. I sold my good guy doll to be able to buy this one. Because um, I will be making a sequel to my Chucky fan film, which has been doing great. If you guys want to watch it, go to the link in the description. Which I do use the Trick or Treat Studios Good Guy doll in that film. Um, and it's great. I really look forward to the day that they make like a regular like Chucky without the scars when he's like alive, like Child's Play 2. And maybe have like maybe interchangeable arms where you like you have the knife and stuff. So that's pretty damn cool. So right, I'm gonna show you guys close-ups of his face and his body so you guys can get all the details all the weathering and the paint and all that all right so here we have a close-up of chucky i was gonna put a halloween poster in the background but i figured nah fuck it so i just left the, this batman poster so i mean the detailing on him is just fucking amazing i mean i'm trying to like do this freaking let me try to zoom in let me show me has it just the focus. I mean look at that. Just like the fucking gloss in his eye. In his eyes. The scars. Let me let me put the white light on instead of the purple one I have on now. See if that were oh that helps a lot. So I mean look at that. That's just like fucking amazing. It looks very very screen accurate. And the the staples I believe they're actually metal, so that's like, they actually fucking stapled that shit into the side of his head. So that is, well, yeah, you do gotta be careful, cause like some of the hairs get loose, like, you know, he, sometimes you got like a little hair just popping out, and you pull this to the front. All the other staples are like, molded on there, it's only the ones that hold the hair that are actually like, metal staples. All the other ones, like, uh, these right here and stuff are, um, are just plastic, uh, staples. So, yeah. So like I said, what I love is that the hair is actually like stitched in there. 
rather than just like a wig, which is great. It really does help, like with styling the hair and stuff like that. And on this side, if you put his hair up, you pretty much he has like a huge ass bald spot, which is pretty much on this side, like his hair in the film, it just like falls to the side to cover up like this big bald spot. This is like 3D, and you can actually like like the skin is raised, and this is like his skull, and it's like fucking dope. And you got some more um, metal um, staples. Sometimes I point at the wrong area because like I'm looking at the screen right now and it's inverted So it's like the opposite side and then you pull his hair over here. You got some more um Some more like deep freaking cracks and stuff like that So like I I, I don't want to try it But I'm guessing be careful you don't pull on any of the hairs that are like stapled into his head because they may fall off Um, I'm assuming they may fall off so he has six fucking and the 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 hairs in his, in his freaking eyebrow are just like, that's really cool. And yeah, they just did a great job with him. I'm sure you guys like the bottom of his neck right there. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> if you sleep next to this shit, I don't know if you'd be able to sleep right. So I'm making sure you guys his side. Hold on, let me like try to get him to stand up because now I gotta get behind the camera to like, do a up and down. Let me just try to get him in a pose where he can stand on his own. Hopefully I can get him in one. I think that's it. Hopefully he doesn't fall. If he does, hopefully he doesn't break or get scratched or anything. So they they have like um like the fucking the foam is actually like the foam of the doll like that's under it. It's, they actually sculpted some and painted some scars and wounds on there. The the pins are actually real pins, I believe. Um, I think, in my opinion, I'm not going to try to open it, but I think, in my opinion, this should have probably glued the tip of the pin. You know, in case... I know <laughs> no kid would buy something like this. is like a collector's item, but just in case, you know, maybe your kid, you have a kid and your kid's into hard to win. They play with a doll and maybe swallow a pin or some shit, or accidentally pinch themselves. The hands, it's, he has um, just some scars there. He has some pretty big hands compared to the, to the, to the good guy doll. And then like his shirt and all that, his overalls are like kind of like darker and more weathered than the good guy. His shoes are a little darker as well. Um, all over on the bottom, on the sides. And you get the side there. I really like the hair. I I love it. Let me show you guys his clothing in the full front. Alright. <clears throat> so let me zoom into his face. You get the nice eyebrows, the veins in his eyes. I don't know if you can see them from here. Um, I was going to use my zoom lens on this, on this review, but I decided not to, so I can't really like zoom into his eyes right now. Um, so you got the nice scarring there. Stop right there. So this is being held together by a pin, as you can see, he does not have any scarring here on the foam, um, he has a hole here, and you can see like his shirt under it, he has a big asshole here, I mean like huge, you can pretty much see like his whole leg there with another pin, um, let me go down a bit, so this is the hole I was talking about, in case you guys didn't see it in that other angle, it's pretty huge, you do get a little cut on his sweater here which is actually stitched together um you get another pin down there on his left leg and over there on the on his left crotch area like where that pin is as you can see it's like dirty maybe it's dried up blood i don't know because remember this version of chucky is not like the one from um bride of chucky where he's like all actually dirty and stuff this is like in the film this is a prop they made for a movie of Chucky they were making within the movie so he's like so this in itself in the movie in the movie universe is also a prop it's not like the actual you know possessed original Chucky doll from Bride of Chucky you got the scars there, the hair very nice his hand, this hand doesn't have any um scars on this wrist, let me show you guys just like in the film, he does have 
made in Japan right there, just like in the movie. It would have been nice if his fingers would have been posable. You know, like whether you want to display him with a knife in his hands, or maybe just display him flicking, flicking someone off. Like, you know, he's flicking his fucking middle finger at someone. I don't know why I'm cursing so much in this review, sorry guys, but I mean, I guess it does go with the, with the character I'm reviewing. Potty Mouth, Charles Lee Ray. So on the back, it's not that jacked up. It's pretty normal. Um, yeah. I, I did notice one thing. I'm not sure if I'm right. I think I might be right. I'm not 100% sure, but I believe, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm probably wrong given how accurate this is, but I believe in the movie, his hair was maybe a little bit longer in the back. He kind of had like a mullet type of thing going on. Cause like it's longer here, but like it's not the same. You know, like here's shorter in this side, but I remember it being like a tiny bit longer in the film. But that's not a big deal. It still looks long. It still looks pretty accurate. And like I said, given that this is already, I'm sure this costs a lot of money to make, and this is very accurate in itself. I doubt that they would miss out on like on on, on a simple detail like that. So, you know, and like it's just freaking great. I mean, look at this guy. I'll show you guys right there. It's just wow. Like, it's funny because I I used to be terrified of Chucky growing up. He was like the only thing I was ever afraid of. Like I would see this dude like on the fucking on a movie box or like a poster or something, and I would like run the other way. Like I was terrified of this guy. And here I am, like reviewing the ugliest, scariest version of himself we have seen in the films. Like, yeah. Let me actually zoom in for you guys. Bring the camera clo um, closer to him. On the eyes, because like, the eyes are just, I mean, they look like real fucking eyes. Sorry all the promotion. Of course, I have the camera on the tripod. Let me just bring it closer. So you guys can see that. Look at that. Look at that. The pupils, the veins, everything is just fantastic. I mean, like I said, it looks like real human eyes. That thing is like freaking amazing. Like shit. I'm gonna use them for a freaking film. Like I said, the sequel to my Chucky fan film, which I repeat, <laughs> link is in the bio. And like, this is a more than worthy prop to use for a film. Sadly, of course, he doesn't talk, he can't move his lips, but, I mean, just the fact of how real he looks on his own is enough to use for a film. Whether you're collectible, you're doing a Chucky fan film, whatever you want to do with this doll, um, he's freaking great. Whether you leave him in the box, the window's big enough to display all the good stuff, which is like his face and stuff, and, yeah, his little teeth in there. It would have been nice if they made it like his mouth deeper, like more like 3D like inside. Um, but it's like, it looks like maybe it's about half an inch deep. Not sure. It seems like it may be less. But I mean, this thing is phenomenal. Like, wow. This is like the best collectible I have in my whole collection. Without a doubt. And I think that's it. I think I showed you guys all the stuff that... All the little details that he has and stuff like that. I'm trying to like look around on the doll to see if I missed anything. Yeah, it's pretty much. That's pretty much it. I mean, his shoes are pretty much the same as the uh, the good guy doll, except that they're like a tiny bit darker, a bit more weathered. On the bottom, they're just the same color. Um. And yeah, like well, if you got the money for this dude. I recommend getting him. Whether you're a Chucky fan or you're just like a horror fan in general, I'm just a Chucky fan, you know, and a Halloween fan, so like I got him like a fair share of Trick or Treat Studio products, you know, Ch um, Halloween and the Gremlin, as you guys saw. I love Gremlins. I like this guy, is just. They killed it with this guy, I mean. Yeah. So, thank you guys for watching this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, please hit the like and subscribe button. Um, and check out my first Chucky fan film in the link in the description, which at now is my most viewed video at, I believe, 405,000 views. That's helped it get to, hey, a million. Um, and go watch the second part, which is where this guy would be featured in. Um, I'll probably be posting it sometime around mid-October. 
possibly the third week of October. So stay tuned, have a look at my channel, turn your notifications on so you guys could see how this guy looks on film, you know, rather than just a review with a freaking light in his face. Like, I mean, I I'm pretty sure this guy will look fucking dope. Like, you know, like, with all the movie magic and all that. So, like I said, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys like this video.